We got these, and I got a bunch of IPOC tracks, so you guys okay? You got yeah, enough? You got a couple loose milling yard mills, just some loose ones. I got some of your IPOC tracks. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to glorify you, Father God, to edify the saints and to evangelize to those that ain't. Or per perhaps maybe to call out the remnant, Lord God. And Father, I pray, Lord God, that you would be pleased with what we do today, that you would pave the ways, Father, that your Holy Spirit would water the soil, their hearts down now, Let Lord, those one-on-one -on -one conversations the, turn into conversions. Five, verse 17 to 42. And then the, this is when the time when the, it says, when the high priest rose up and all those who were in him, which is to select the Sadducees, and they were filled with indignation, meaning jealousy, and they laid their hands upon the apostles and to put them in the uh, common prison. But at the night, the angels of the Lord opened the prison doors, brought them out and said, go and stand into the temple, speak to the people the words of this life. And when they heard that, they entered the temple early in the morning and taught, but the high priest and those who came and called the council together with all the elders of the children of Israel and sent to the prison to have them brought. So now they're going to be bold and now they're going to be brought. And at that time, we see in the Sanhedrin, there were 70 members being in front of a, something that's going to maybe discourage you or whatnot. But it comes to the point that we stand in the within truth. And that's at the cost of the pain. So while they're going, verse 22, it says, when the officers came and did not find him in prison and they returned to report, they said, indeed, found a prison shut securely and guards stand outside before the doors. But when we opened them, we found no one inside. Now when the high priest and the captains of the temple and, and the chief priests heard these things, they wandered and and what they out to come would be. And the be. fact that he's saying that I'll be a witness for and dying for and also, he's showing that it's showing the true repentance and forgiveness. See, it's not the fact that we're going out, we're going to spread the gospel and showing remorse. It's true repentance that come through the Holy Spirit to convict those hearts. Oh, man. But the awesome thing is the fact that we will be out there going out to be the availability to go out there and let the Spirit move in us and through us and empower us. See, so many Christians to this day say they want to be empowered by the Holy Spirit and walk into spread the gospel. But how can you do it if you're sitting on your couch? Amen. How can you do it if you're looking at somebody else do the same thing? Listen, how, church. Listen, church. And that's the, that's the problem these days is the fact that they don't understand it. And then when the person goes out there, knowing the fact that they feel like they have to draw or convince or say a sinner's prayer, and that's unbiblical. Okay, how long did it take to get up here, team? 20 minutes, maybe? 15? You think 15 minutes? I'd say a half an hour. I'd say about a half an hour. You took me 40 minutes. We sweated a lot. This is the controversial cross that uh, humanists and atheists opposed in the federal courts and we're going to talk about the biblical cross and what it stands for amen good afternoon ladies and gentlemen my name is bill we're with uh, lakeshore city church located in corona california i'm sure you're aware of the cross up there on this wonderful hill the beautiful cross that has been challenged in the united states federal court what is the meaning of this beautiful cross i'm here to invoke a proclamation of the old rugged cross the blood-stained cross that jesus christ the lord of lords and king of kings was crucified upon ladies and gentlemen as john bunyan said christianity we can do it the easy way or god's way so let's do it God's way, the biblical way. You see, many times throughout the Old Testament, Jesus and his cross has been mentioned in prophecy. Let me give you a brief overview of the history of the cross. The cross was originally referred to as a tree or a stake or a pole. The cross was the Romans, Roman government's form of death by execution, tantamount to today's lethal injection or death by electrocution. You see, the Romans forced the criminal that was about to be executed to carry the cross beam over their shoulders as they walked to the cross site. They then placed the upper beam up onto the pole, which created the form of the cross. And that's where we get the cross from. I would like to review an abbreviated timeline of the Old Testament prophecies regarding Jesus Christ and his cross, the cross that he was crucified upon, his tree. You see, it was prophesied in, in uh, Psalms chapter 35, verse 19, that Jesus Christ would be hated without a cause. 
And that prophecy was fulfilled in John 15, 25. It was prophesied in Zechariah 13, 7 that Jesus' disciples would abandon him. That was fulfilled in Matthew 16, 31 through 36. It was prophesied in Psalms 22, 16 that his hands and feet would be pierced. That was fulfilled in Luke 23, 33. It was prophesied in Psalms 22:18 that they would cast lots for Christ's garments. And that was fulfilled in John 19, 23 through 34. It was prophesied in 22, Psalms 22, 15 that Christ's strength and thirst would dry up. Fulfilled, John 19, 26. And it was prophesied in Psalms 59, 21 that Christ would be given vinegar for his thirst. Fulfilled in Matthew 27, 34. It was prophesied in Zechariah 12, 10 that Christ would be pierced in his side. That was fulfilled in John 19, 34 through 37. And it was prophesied in Exodus 12, 46 and Psalms 34, 20 that not one of Jesus Christ's bones would be broken. Fulfilled John 19, 33 through 36. And of course it was prophesied in Isaiah 53, 5 through 6 that Jesus Christ would suffer and bear the sins of all of mankind, including my sins. And that was fulfilled in Hebrews 9, 28. Ladies and gentlemen, the shedding of the blood of Jesus Christ was necessary for man to be uh, forgiven for their sins. The cross was necessary that mankind could be forgiven of their sins. And Jesus told the Christians, his church, those that have been saved, those that have been born again, to deny ourselves and take up the cross and follow Jesus Christ daily. Why? As I stated earlier, thousands of years ago, in the Roman Empire, when the Romans executed a criminal upon their cross, the prisoner was often forced to publicly carry their own crossbeam to their own crucifixion site. You see, every one of us have broken all of God's commandments. We have Jesus Christ's blood guilt all over us, myself included. However, Jesus took that cross on my behalf and yours because of our sins and because of my sins. Fact is, what I deserve is death, judgment, and an eternity in hell. But thanks to Jesus Christ, His cross, and His blood, Christ became the redemption of my sin. Christ became the Redeemer and the propitiation for my sins. It says in 1 John 2, 1, for those of you that are Christians, my little children, I am writing these things to you so that you may not sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. You see, Christ paid my ransom. Hence, the price has been paid at His cross. Christ became the sacrificial lamb. As John said in John 1.29, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And therefore, if Jesus Christ bore my sins on His cross, then I too should take up the cross daily as the Scripture commands us to, the church, even to persecution, even to death if necessary. You see, ladies and gentlemen, if you are a Christian, then you need to do the same. It's time to get right with God. It's time to get serious about our faith in Jesus Christ. It's a time to quit playing churchianity. It's a time to get away from this emergent church movement. It says in Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. And Jesus said in Matthew 10.38-39, he who does not take up his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it, and he who loses his life for my sake will find it. See, Christians are commanded to preach the cross and to take it up daily. It says in 1 Corinthians 1.17, For Christ did not send me to baptize, but to preach the gospel, not with wisdom of words, lest the cross of Christ should be made of no effect. Ladies and gentlemen, it says in Galatians 6.14, For God forbid that I should boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. 
It says in Ephesians 2.16 that he, Jesus Christ, might reconcile them both to God in one body through the cross, therefore, thereby putting to death the enmity. See, we understand that many will oppose the cross. And, men, and as this one has been battled in the United States courts, the federal court. And we understand that, folks, because it says right here in 1 Corinthians 1.18, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. Glory, hallelujah. It says in Philippians 3.18, For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping that they are the enemies of the cross of Jesus Christ. I hope that you're not an enemy of Christ. You see, if we're of the world and if we love the things of the world, it says in James chapter 4, verses 4 through 5, that we are an enemy of Christ. See, the Bible says that we can even have peace through His cross. Not the cross on the hill, but the cross that Jesus Christ died upon. It says in Colossians 1.20, and by him, Christ, to reconcile all things to himself by him, whether things on earth or things on heaven, having made peace through the blood of his cross. Have you ever heard of the phrase, man, you nailed it? Well, Jesus Christ nailed it. He nailed our sins. And it says right here in this verse, Colossians 2.14, Christ, having wiped out the handwriting of requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us, and He, Jesus Christ, has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross. Folks, Christ has nailed your sins to the cross. If you're saved, if you're born again, if you repent from your sins and put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ. It says in 1 Peter 3.18, For Christ also suffered once for all sins, and just for the unjust, that he, Christ, might bring us to God, putting to death in the flesh, but made alive by the Holy Spirit. But when you only benefit from the cross, folks, you know him. You will only benefit from the cross, folks, if you know Jesus Christ. Do you know him, miss? Is he your Lord and Savior? Praise God. I'm glad to hear that. Well, thank you for that. The Bible says that Lord Jesus, the Lord Jesus Christ even bore our sins. It says in Galatians 3.13, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it is written, Curse it is everyone who hangs on a tree. It says in Philippians 2.8, And being found in appearance as a man, Christ humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of the cross. It says in Hebrews 12, 2, Looking on to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and was sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus Christ stood up and died for us. And therefore, we shall stand and die for him if necessary. We shall stand up for his cross of Jesus Christ. All of mankind was born into sin, myself included. Therefore, our sin separates us from God. You see, sin will kill us, but Jesus Christ can save us. It says in Romans 6.23, For the wages of our sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through the Lord Jesus Christ. Please understand that when you die, you will have to give an account to God. He will judge you according to His standards, His commandments. He will judge me according to His commandments as well. You see, if you've ever lied, if you've ever committed adultery, if you've ever committed fornication, even if you've had lust in your heart for another person that is not your lawfully wedded, sp wedded spouse, if you've ever hated anyone, if you've ever used God's name in vain, then you will endure the wrath of God. It says in John chapter 3, verse 36, Ma'am, I don't want you to endure the wrath of God. I hope you're saved. I hope you're saved. Folks up there, I hope you can hear this. I don't want anybody to endure the wrath of God, but everybody will that is not saved from their sins. You see, we've all sinned against a holy God, and therefore we will all be damned into hell. But here's the remedy to the problem. Here's the solution to the problem. Here's the good news, folks. You see, religion will not save you. Roman Catholicism will not save you. Mormonism will not save you. But the Jesus Christ of the Bible can save you. It says in 1 Corinthians 15, 3 through 4, For I have delivered to you first all that which I have received, that Jesus Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures 
and that he was buried, and that he rose again on the third day according to the Scriptures. You see, the Bible warns, my, my friends, that one day, that at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow, of those in heaven and those of earth, on the earth, and even those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. See, Jesus warned in Mark 1.15 that the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. Do you guys believe in the gospel? Oh, praise God. Please obey it though, right? Amen. Because there is no salvation without repentance, Luke 13.3. See, Jesus warned in Mark 1.15 that we must repent and believe in the gospel. Jesus said in John 3.3, 3, I tell you, you must be born again from above to inherit the kingdom of God. If you're not born again, you will not see heaven, my friends. Jesus said in John 14.6, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and nobody comes to the Father but through me. I'm going to quote a pastor that I could never walk in his shoes. Diedrich Bonk Bonhoeffer said it this way, and I quote, Jesus Christ lived in the midst of his enemies. At the, at the end, all his disciples desert, deserted him. On the cross, he was utterly alone, surrounded by evildoers and mockers. For this cause, he had come to be, bring peace to the enemies of God. So the Christian, too, belongs not in the seclusion of a cloistered life, but in the thick of foes. There is his commission, his work. The kingdom is to be in the midst of your enemies. And he who does not suffer this does not want to be in the kingdom of Christ. He wants to be among friends, to sit among roses and lilies, not with bad people, but with devout people. Oh, you blasphemers and betrayers of Christ. If Christ had done what you are doing, you would have never been spared. Close quote. Folks, in closing, don't just believe in Jesus as most churches will tell you today. You must put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ and Christ alone. Don't just believe in the gospel as most churches will tell you today. It says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1 that if we do not know God and obey the gospel of Jesus Christ, that the fiery vengeance of the Lord Jesus Christ will be upon you. You're not going to hear that in 90% of the churches across America, ladies and gentlemen. You see, we're to put on the Lord Jesus Christ, it says. We're to fear and tremble at the word of God. Ladies and gentlemen, the Bible commands us to repent from our sins. To repent means to change your mind, to turn from your sins, and commit to Jesus Christ. Man, do you know Jesus Christ? Amen. Amen. I love that. Thank you. Praise God. Folks, Jesus said in Luke 13, 3, I tell you, unless you repent, you will all likewise perish. Do you hear that in church? Does your pastor tell the congregation that there is no salvation without repentance? And that's why we're here today, folks. That's why Lakeshore City Church has come out here to preach the gospel in a way that, that uh, we, we believe is, is the right way, the whole counsel of the Word of God. It's been said that people on earth hate to hear the word repent, but those in hell wish they could have heard it one more time. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time to get serious. If you're not saved, if you're not born again, call out to the Lord Jesus Christ. And the word call out in Greek means to declare him as your Lord. The word believe in Jesus means to commit to Jesus in the Greek. It means to, to be uh, trusted with. Are you entrusted with Jesus Christ? Please, folks, consider this message. If you have any questions, we have many people over here with some gospel tracts. We'd love to give you some, as well as some postcards, uh, to invite you to our church as well. We love you very much. Right. The question is, are you a good person? All right, so you have to convince me that you're a good person, and you'll get this money right out of my hands. Any, any takers? We're a church that gives away money. I'm already a believer, but what do you want me to ask me? I don't ask you a question. Okay. All right. How do you spell shop? Shop? Yeah. What do you do in a green light? Stop. All right, you didn't win the money, man. Green light. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can I ask you one more question? No. Come on, big, it's the no biggest question. It's the biggest question. 
What's gonna happen when you die, man? What are you gonna, what's gonna happen? What are you, where are you gonna go? I'm gonna go to heaven. You're gonna go to heaven? Because of Jesus. Because of Jesus? What yeah. did Jesus do so you can go to heaven? He died on the cross. He took my sins for penalty me. for that okay. crime. And then, and then justice is served. So what God says in his word is that when we when we break his law, justice has to be served, right? The the, the Bible says that that we've all we've all broken his by the way, I, I've lied, I've stolen, I've used God's name as a cuss word, I've committed idolatry, I've coveted. I've done. I've done. I've broken all the Ten Commandments. All right. I'm the chief sinner. I. I. I Every on this hill. I've done it all. I, I admit it. It's gonna be on YouTube. Okay? Is that okay with you? Cool. Um, sure. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So. Come on. It's okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Let me. We're, you know you're fine. We're clogging the arteries here. Thank you. All right. So. Spell the word shop. Shop. Yeah. S H O P. What do you do at a green light? Stop. All right. You didn't win a dollar. What do you okay. do at a green light? Go. <laughs> You said stop now. Oh, I said stop. All right. <laughs> Woo! All right. Here you go, miss. Oh, thank you. All right, is anybody else?